your brain, you're in the nerd's domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Jesse. I'm Shirley. And welcome to the Nerds Bay Podcast. Year this- in review. Year in review. Yay. So we're going to look at all of the stuff from 2013 that we experienced for the first time. This doesn't necessarily mean stuff that came out in 2013, but it's stuff that we really enjoyed and was memorable from that year for us, uh, or that we uh, experienced more in 2013. Some of the stuff I started, I know some of us started before that year, or this past year. So, let's get into books. Uh, Shirley, you uh, you have some books you like? Yeah, um, this year, um, some of our friends from the Cam LARP, um, Stefan and Roach, they started a um, eggplant literary productions, well, which yeah. you um, sent me a couple of novella or a few novellas from them. Um, not a very fast reader, so I like these because I could get through them in a couple days, which would probably take you guys about an hour to get through. But um, the books that I like the most and that stuck with me this year are Spiritual Growths. Um, the Illusion of Steel and Edamaze Little Theory. And you didn't like Edamaze Little Theory when you first started. Uh, when I read the bio on Eggplant um, Productions, uh, Literary Productions website, I was like, yeah, there's no way that I'm going to like this. It's just, it didn't seem like something that I would be interested in. But then, um, you know, I got crunched for time one week and I had to review something. I think at that time, this was one of the two that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, that we only had at the time. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll just go ahead and read it and get it over with. And um, I had ended up being, being like one of my favorite stories from them. So, yeah, I really, really liked it a lot. Oh, and Rachel, who runs the thing, we did an interview with her back in, I want to say September. Yeah, that's right. Um, we did at, for the podcast her. Um, so. and talked about kind of their, their pro, their, what they do. Um, they just opened up their production to full length novel- novels. Um, they also do a Spellbound uh, quarterly magazine, and then they're doing a couple of anthologies that they did Kickstarters for. I don't remember quite what they're called, but ones that sh- like strictly for children. Um, it's kind of alternate sto- uh, f- um, fairy tales, and then the other ones for adults. And it's not like adult like um, sex, drug, and ro- drugs and rock and roll, but more like it's it's a more serious in tone and more um, like grown up in nature. Yeah, grown up in more nature. Mature material. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those that liter- we love eggplant a lot. And what's their website? Is it eggplant it's eggplantproductions.com, dot com? I'm pretty sure eggplantproductions dot com. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I've also um, um, our friend gave me the Sandman what trade mm-hmm. books. So I am on the second book of that. What do you think about that? It's been on my radar for quite a while. Uh, I really, really liked it. I like. Um, I like the way that it's written. I'm I'm not too big of a comic book person because of, you know, like I re- like reading whole sections and paragraphs. So reading like the bubbles and then moving on to the next bubble, um, I it just, it, like sometimes it literally like gives me a stomach ache. Hmm. For a person so, who likes subtitles, I figured I'd be right up your alley. You know, you would think so, um, but... Yeah, but I like the way it's written. There's enough words um, within the frames um, that hold my attention long enough, and I like the art. We might see and how you do with uh, the Comicsology Guided View. See yeah. how you like that. Oh, the yeah. thing is, um, Chaos Comics isn't on there, or um, Boundless isn't on there, uh, because right. Lady Death. Right, yeah. that's because Boundless is tiny, tiny, and the only thing they put out is like, well, they yeah. need to like step up their you know game. It's, like, it's that, up to I would totally read it if <laughs> Lady Death, uh, who's that? Yeah. What? Oh, oh. So Jesse There's gonna be some butt whooping. Jesse, uh any books from you? Um well unfortunately I feel bad about this, but I haven't read a lot of books this year. I, I have stumbled across a comic book I enjoy called The Boys. It's a very mature and dark look at the ramifications of a world with superpowers. Okay. Um it's just a group of guys who are trying to put an end to the uh, people who have superpowers. They're they've gone out of control. They're very evil. Yeah. And it, like I said, it is a highly mature 
comic. It is uh, written by Garth Ennis, the arts by Derek Robertson. It's very well done, but uh, NC-17 at best. Yeah, I was going to say, so um, if you're going to give it like a movie rating. Yeah, NC-17. Yeah, definitely a very, very hard art yeah. from, from my perspective. I haven't read it, but I've heard enough about it, and I've talked enough about it to people that have read it that that's kind of – It is. It's, that's very much its, its realm. What did draw me into it is the, uh, the main protagonist looks almost exactly like Simon Pegg. Really? Yeah. Oh. They've even stated that they basically – through Simon Pegg. <laughs> huh. Right on. Um, so this year for me, uh, I kind of uh, made my way through the uh, Wheel of Time books. I read four of them. I'm waiting on someone to catch up so she can buy book eight. But I read four, five, and six, or four, five, six, and seven. Um, I'm not a fast. Yeah. So I, I got through. I got through those early in the year, and then I picked up uh, Dresden Files really sticks out. As well, I started with the first book there, and I really enjoyed it. It's very different from a lot of the, I want to say fantasy, but it's not really, it is kind of fantasy, but not. Yeah, I when I first picked it up, I really thought I wouldn't like it, because it, it's real hard to mix fantasy with modern times. Yeah. And they, they really do a good job at that. Um, and then I also read Game of Thrones, um, the book one of A Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, did you? And, um, and that was after watching the show. So unfortunately, I guess in my mind, everybody from the show immediately got transposed in my mind as what they look like from the books, which is okay, I guess, but it's not, it, it, I, I would have preferred to read the book first. I wish I would have. Um, I have not gone past book one. It was a very, very, very long audio book, like the longest audio book I've ever experienced <laughs> ever. Um, it's a big one, but it, but it was worthwhile. And I, I definitely want to read the rest of the series and get caught up and, um, maybe get ahead of the HBO series, which won't take much since, you know, we're going to run out of books soon. It it also starts deviating from the books heavily by the third but, season. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's kind of it for my, my books right now. Oh, oh yeah. No, that's okay. Um, what? Nothing. No, I'm curious. Uh, it was uh, the the art of boxing was one of the eggplant novellas. I read it because um, I was kind of looking for something to read real quick, and it was the first book we got from eggplant. And I didn't, I don't, Jesse, you're not into boxing, right? No. And I wasn't either. But when I got to the end of this, I really wanted more. It was boxing. It was very much about boxing, but it was written about a, in a sci-fi world, and it was it was done in such a such a high quality, and that's really what eggplant, all of eggplant stuff is very, very high quality. Um, it was done in such high quality that it drew me in, and even though the subject matter wasn't important, the rest of the world more than made up for it. So, I really like that. Um, let's move on to podcasts. Uh, Shirley, mm -hmm. what, what have you been listening to podcast-wise that sticks out? The only thing that... I'm still listening to podcast wise is um, well the dystopic boys um, when they put out their um, oh my gosh lost no. pages uh, last, last frequency, frequency. <laughs> last frequency uh, when they put out their episodes of last frequency I listen to that um, I'm still on critical hit I think what we're on season two yeah season two season two just started season so, two um, just made it um, onto this what, they're in heaven or hell? No, or um, they're in the astral sea. Oh, the astral sea, yeah. In the so, holy city of Arathus. Yep. So we're there, and I'm um, following the guys through that um, through that adventure. Um, other than that, I think the only other... I mean, NPR has an app that you can download. Um, it has, and this more has to do with the... Um, a Saturday show that they put on and it's called uh, Words... Oh my gosh. Something Words. It has to do with um, uh, the origin of certain words and why they mean um, certain things. But it's it's in a format where it's very interactive. They have people calling in through the whole show saying, yeah, um, you know, my aunt's uncle says 
you know, how do you do or some kind of southern slang. And then they go through and they break down the slang and, and where it comes from and, and why. Yeah, yeah. And why it is what it is and how it means different things to different people. So I really uh-huh. like that NPR show. Right on. So um, I listen to weekly. I found a podcast. I found a couple of podcasts, but I found a podcast I really love. I love history. Um, and there's a man named Dan Carlin, and he puts out a podcast called Har- Har- Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. And these are long episodes, um, usually put out in spurts, once every three months or so. And then uh, he goes and goes and goes for like two and a half hours per episode. Like these are long and really dives into the subject. And usually it's like a four or five part series, and he really gets into the, like – the one, the one that I listened to that I started with and, and reviewed for the site was um, the fall of the Roman Republic, and like he really, really gets into how it became an empire and not just a republic, and like looks at all these things and all the different factors. And history is really big for me, and it was so in depth. The downside is it's so in depth and so long that. It's three months between episodes, so you hear part one, and then part two comes out, and you might have to go listen to part one again, because you don't remember it. Um, but it's high, high quality, and I really like it. Um, the other podcast I found was Good Job Brain. I love love the idea of trivia, and going to a trivia pub, or pub trivia night. Um, I've never done it, but I like trivia and learning crap that nobody really cares about, and that's all that Good Job Brain is about. It's a it's a group that did a Kickstarter for uh, their podcast for their trivia team. And so, um, so uh, they go through and like look up stuff and do trivia stuff and, and it's a lot of fun. So I really, I really suggest that. Um, Jesse, do you have anything? I do. Um, there's an upstart podcast. It just kind of started. It's called Disney story origins. I've only listened to one by him, and they have two up, but I really enjoyed it. And the first podcast was on Pocahontas, and it explains basically how they got the story wrong. But they In about a thousand ways. Yeah, and it, but they also state the story that Disney was trying to get across. So it, it, yeah. it was very interesting. The second one is unfortunately frozen, which I haven't seen yet. So I really don't want to spoil the story by listening to yeah, what yeah. they've done wrong. Fair <laughs> uh, enough. One of the others I've started listening to is uh, Heroes and Villains. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, Who's on our network. They, they are, and I, I really enjoy it. I, I love comics, but I am a very cheap individual, and comics <laughs> are kind of pricey for the little amount of entertainment you actually get from them. Mm-hmm. So actually getting to hear more about the heroes that I haven't been able to read as much as I wanted to about is, is very entertaining. It's frugal. Frugal. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. That makes and, me sound less. And all three of us have for, forgotten one of the most important podcasts available. Uh, Masks of Narltep. Oh, yeah. Uh, that we're all That's three the in. the bestest ever. It yeah. is. I actually enjoy that one quite a bit, um, all three times that I listen to every episode. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I I don't usually listen to the things that we do because I don't like to be critical of myself. But I went back and listened to all of the side quest um ones that we did just so I could critique myself. And oh my gosh, we are a lot of fun to listen I to. I know, I, I know, was, right? I was I know. like, no, I was thinking like it was going to be like deadpan, no. dry, drop. Everybody's going to hang up on us in two seconds, and I was like. Oh my gosh, we are hilarious. Yeah. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with so, that one. It, yeah. it's, it's going really well. Um, I'll go ahead and start games. Because Matt wants to take all the good stuff. Um, I played Sentinels of the Multiverse for the first time this year and absolutely loved it. Um, ran right out literally the same day and purchased it. And then uh, turned around and bought the uh, one of the, the expansions at Gen Con and then my lovely coworkers for the website bought me another expansion, and I can't wait to get the last expansion they have out before they put the next expansion out, and I'm just enjoying every bit of it. I, this is the only game that I bought an app just to have it on a, like a side project kind of thing. Like It's not even an app to play the game. It's an app to 
assist in playing the game, and yeah. I, I'm happy to own that app. And it keeps score. Yeah. It keeps score. It lets you choose your villains. It keeps... Um, it lets you randomize out. everything. Yeah. Like, it's it really, really good. What the villain puts out, what the environment puts out. Yeah. I really like it. I thought it was going to be a hindrance, but I like the way that it, like, actually... Um, in- integrates into the game that you're playing on tabletop. Yeah. And then um, I also, we also found for the, this year the DC deck building game. Um, and I was, I was leery because you never know how licensed products are going to go. Yeah. But DC Comics, and DC Comics for me are is not my primary like focus. It never has been. I've always been a Marvel guy. But this game is fun, it's fast, it's easy to learn. There's a lot of different strategies you can use. It's really a seriously good game, and I really, really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 go I'm ahead. Sorry. As a person who really likes DC, I did enjoy it quite a bit too. I was leery about it also because a lot of people whose reviews I trust gave it bad reviews, and I really, for the life of me, can't figure out why. Yeah, and unfortunately on the – oh, go ahead. No, I think that they may, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen the reviews that they've given, but for me, I, I mean, I like Sentinels of the Multiverse, but some kind, sometimes it can be complicated for me. Mm-hmm. So the DC deck building game, I like a lot better because it's a little more simplified. And for me, it feels like I have more control over how I get to, um, I have more control over how I get to help defeat the um, defeat the bad guy, but also um, I have more control over how I get to build my deck. I'm not like pulling cards from uh, pulling cards from um, a pre a predetermined deck. I get to build it the way that I want to. I get to build my hand the way that I want to. So that's why I like the PC deck building game. Uh, versus Sentinels of the Multiverse. Yeah, and on the flip side of that, the Marvel deck building game, just I, I really don't care for it. It's not terrible, but it's definitely, it's definitely built in a different way, and it, it, I think it's a disservice to what they could have done with it. See, I, I love the theme in it. I think it works great, but it's just it's the, the set down and tear it. You'll spend more time setting the game up and taking it down, and you will actually play the game. Yeah. Uh, so Jesse, what do you have for games? Well, the first one is uh, Dwarven Miners by Rather Dashing Games. It's a group I stumbled upon at Gen Con. It's a push your luck resource management game. Okay. Dice card game. Dice card game. Okay. <laughs> Basically, you just, you roll six dice, and it it has little emblems on it for like you get iron ore or something like that. You have people who are in your end that are looking for certain items, like you might have a warrior who needs a shield and a sword, and you need three iron and one mithril to make a sword, so you set those aside. If you don't get the ore you like, you just keep rolling the dice to you get what you want, but if you get an orc, that dice is removed from the pool. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then you can also roll thieves, which lets you steal from other people's stash, so if you hold on to things too long and don't actually make them, it's, it's an interesting game. Okay. The other one's for the computer. It's called uh, State of Decay. It's a uh, new zombie game that just recently came out. I'm trying to think of who makes it. I should have probably researched that to begin with. Yeah, that might help. It, Did you get this through Steam? Yeah, it's through Steam. Uh, right now it's on sale. Uh, so what's the sale down to? Uh, $10. It's typically 20 Uh See, I just don't like... I don't like Steam. They screwed me out of two games. Did they? See, I love Steam. It's the only way I buy my games anymore. Well, I bought Civilization Four. Yeah. And through Steam, and then I got on there, and it said it's not part of, it's not on my account at all. Undead, Undead Labs. It makes State of Decay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Undead Labs. Thank you. And and published by Microsoft. Yep. Wow, the images are look really good. It is. It's kind of a first. It's a Third person. Third person view, and it's uh, mostly melee. You, there are guns you can find if you fire them and attract zombies to you, but it's not your typical just try to survive game. You also okay. build out up an outpost. You go out and collect supplies. 
You can switch between okay. players. There is no – you can't save the game on your own. So if somebody dies, they're dead. As soon as someone dies, it automatically saves. So you can't back up. Nice. Okay. Um, anything else from you um, for games? That is – that's it. Okay. Surely. Um. I mean, this year we got uh, we did a lot at Gen Con and um, and then Game Paradise opened up, so we have a lot of options over there. Um, I think um, and I got Firefly, uh, the board game for Christmas. Because uh, you have a, a wonderful, wonderful boyfriend. Um. Yeah. Yeah, because my wonderful, wonderful boyfriend bought me Firefly, the board game for Christmas, and um. I was going to say DC, the DC deck building game. I mean, I like. So you know, this is my list, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that's your list. But because that would have been like the third thing you stole first. off my dang list. I know. So I do like Sentinels of the Multiverse. I'm I very much like DC and um, Penny Arcade uh, deck building games. Um, Lords of Waterdeep. I will. I would. I could. I would play that every single day if we could play it every single day. I really like that game. And um, uh, Fastly becoming one of my favorites um, is Firefly. There is a lot of. Um, for me, there's a lot of complicated moving parts to the game, and it can last forever mm-hmm. if you don't try to accomplish your goals because. What we played it for four hours the other night. Uh, two and a half, three, three and a half. I don't, we lost track. I think it's it was about a while. Four hours, and we hadn't even well, accomplished and one on our. There was a lot of goofy table talk that yeah. night too, which is not a big deal, but like that did take away some of it. Yeah. So um, definitely like Firefly. Um, I don't know whether I should put the games that I play on my phone in here. Yeah, or those, they those are apps. apps. Those are totally apps. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I um, okay. I I forgot a couple of games actually. Oh what? I Go com- ahead, Matt. I completed both Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas this year. Nice. Um, I was saddened when I got to the end of Fallout Three, and that was the end because instead of instead of I played up Fallout Three before, but I played like all the side quest stuff and didn't get very far in the main quest. Um, like I got to the the Brotherhood of Steel in the Pentagon once, and that's where I stopped. Like, because I was doing all the other side quests. Um, so playing through all that, I was really disappointed that it ended where it did. Um, it just kind of, there could have been so much more, and I, I know that there is in the DLC, and I haven't touched any of that. Um, or I hadn't touched any of that in this one. I played it all of it in the in my original run-through that I didn't complete. Um Fallout New Vegas, I spent about 108 hours playing through most of the, the the side quest stuff, all of the DLC. And when I got to the end, I was very disappointed because it was just so anticlimactic. Um, I chose not to spoil anything, but you know what? It's almost four. It's three years old, so too bad. Yeah, it's um, horrible. Uh, I, I got to the end, chose the uh, house or the, the, uh, my, I own Vegas option, um, killed the second in command of Caesar's Legion, talked my way out of fighting the general, and that was the end. And it was really disappointing. And I think what really, really kind of killed it for me was just that there could have been something else, but it just was like, I got to the end and that was it. And the NCR turned into dicks at the end, and I was really disappointed. In they that. turned into dicks real early. <laughs> they were like, "You need to go kill all the cons." And I'm like, "But I don't want to kill the cons. Like, I'm kind of neutral with them, and I'm okay with that." And they're like, "Nope, kill them all." So that was that was I was disappointed in that. Um, of the DLC, I really, really, really hated Dead Money. Yep. Could not stand Dead Money. <laughs> But uh, what what was the big MT? What was that one called? Uh, Old World Blues. I loved Old oh, World yeah. Blues. It was fun. It was terrifying. The Cazadors in that were <laughs> retardedly hard. Um, unfortunately, I ended up... But I didn't care for Lonesome Road. It was okay. And then the other one, uh, Heart something something... Yeah, something Heart. Something. Lonely Hearts, maybe? Lonely Hearts. Um, that one... That one was okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. I got a good gun out of it, uh, the Silence 45. 
But um, I really liked Old World Blues. The Cazadors were rough. Okay. I ended up going – I did Lonely Hearts, then Old World Blues, then Dead Money, and then Lonesome Road. And I ended up capped at level at the end of Lonesome Road and couldn't gain anything else. And I was – I still hadn't even decided what direction I was going with like the house. Yes, man quests. Like that's how far into the game I was. So like there was still a lot of stuff to experience and I got no experience for any of it. And that was kind of disappointing. But yeah, old world blues is definitely the best one in my book too. I, I, Dala is one of my favorite NPCs. Well, and it's, it's, it's fun, it's goofy, it's hard, it's still serious in a lot of ways. You have to be careful. The Luddites are everywhere. Um, you get but, the armor that talks to you. Yeah, and it's creepy and weird. Um, She's bossy. Yeah, she is. That's Shirley was like, who's, ta- who's talking who's to you? I'm like, that's, you? that's my stealth suit. It's your what? Yeah. <laughs> Um, it has the like the best guns out of it. Um, I walked away with the uh, the the what's her name's rifle, Christine's oh, yeah. uh, sniper rifle. It's amazing, and the armor I got out of there, and yeah, I was I was really happy with that one. The Lonesome Road was kind of lame, other than I got to blow up nukes, and that was kind of fun. Um, I don't know. I there was nothing that came out of Dead Money that was worth doing it. Yeah. Like, not even the story was worth it. See, I like the story, life. but I only ever played it once. Well, and my thing was, if I had gone through all that story and then gotten to walk out with more than two bars of that stupid gold, I would have oh, felt yeah. better. But I got two bars of gold. The whole point is letting it. go. You have to let it go. I know. I don't. <laughs> like, I put too much effort. I got hurt. I, like, yeah. oh, I oh. walked off with a police pistol and a stupid <laughs> hollow rifle. That's what I got. And the police pistol sucks. Oh, um, you know the bossy armor. Did you recognize whose the voice was? Uh, yeah, that's Veronica Belmont. Yeah, yeah. We we talked about that. Um, and there's a lot of uh, like connections to the to some like secondary uh, frog pants people in that game. Yeah. So that, that was kind of cool. Um, I really I really enjoyed Fallout. Uh, New Vegas. I was good with Fallout 3. I played through all the side stuff before, and I liked a lot of that. I need to go back through and play it again and get the DLC, mostly for the retarded gauze rifle and the retarded retarded stealth suit. Yeah, that stealth suit is... That's the first thing I go for, and the rest of the game's just easy mode. Easy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Although I did make the mistake of accidentally wandering into the raider camp with the with the super mutant behemoth, oh yeah, that they let loose. <laughs> like I wandered in the camp and I'm shooting people, and all of a sudden, like the screen shakes a little bit, and I'm like, "What's going on?" Oh, geez, the behemoth's out, and it took me like half an hour to shoot it to death. So that was unfortunate. Um, the other game that I needed to go back to, I'm sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. But that's okay. Um, is Star Realms? Um, we interviewed a guy. Um, at Gen Con about it. They did the Kickstarter in early November, or late October, early November. The game is already out to Kickstarter supporters. They turned around on this real quick. It's really good. I really, really like it. Surely you like it too, don't you? I love it. Um, it's uh, it's a... Deck I, look, I mean, the art is amazing. The, the, the art is amazing. They use some art house. I don't remember which one, but it looks really good. All the designs are great. Um, but we got it yesterday. Yes. You well, we got it before that. Somebody forgot to tell me it was here. <clears throat> so um, I don't know what you're we about. uh the the it's a it's a deck building game, but it's a combat deck building game where you attack your your opponent, and it's built to be a two player game. You buy the base set for two players for twenty bucks. You want to play four players? Buy another base set. That's it. You want to play yeah. six players? Buy another base set. And then it has rules for more than just the two player game. And it also now has boss uh, raid bosses that you can fight oh, really? and build your deck to, to attack them. Yeah, um, there are some extra stuff that came from the Kickstarter. We got a bunch of prom- bunch of promo cards from the Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, does, so, does raid bosses make it a cooperative game then, or? Yes, it can be. A, yeah, they make it a cooperative nice. game, and based on the number of players is what happens, and it's really really cool. So, um, I th- those are those are the games that for me this year that were great. So. Um, Shirley, you want to start on apps? 
Yeah, apps. Um, mine is mine is going to go back to um, the yes. ones that I use the most are now is Trello. Oh yeah, Trello is awesome. It is. Yep. Uh, Even though Jesse doesn't know how to use it and clearly can't move his crap. I do sometimes. I'm going to let you tell people about it because I don't know very much about it other than it's productivity. So Trello is a a project management tool. Um, It's absolutely free. Um, So you sign up online, you activate it on your phone, and then you, you set up projects with tasks assigned to them. So you have a board, and then you have um, I forget what they call them, but like sections Cards. of the board to do to doing done, and then you can add more of those and name them whatever you want, and then put in cards for each of those. So if I had like build a house, I could be be like buy nails, buy wood, buy this, buy this, buy this, and then as I'm doing that, I move them over. You can each under each individual card, you can put due dates. You can put um, you can assign people onto it so that they know that it's theirs, and then when it's close to the due date. They get an email or a notification. Um, you can put uh, checklists in a card. Um, so there's all this stuff you can do. It's been really helpful for what we do with the website. Yeah, um, very helpful. The app on the phone is a little unwieldy. It's a little too small of a device, but that's okay. On my iPad, it's amazing. It works perfectly. Um, and they do have a gold option where you can pay, and if you get people to sign up um, by through your links, you get free gold months. So I have like five months of gold sitting and just a few other extra features that are kind of cool. I really like those. And, uh, I, we use it all the time. Like literally I, that's our project management now. Um, it manages all of our to do lists. So everybody knows what, what they're, what review they're white writing for the week, what they're supposed to be focused on, what they're supposed to be doing. And we just get it all knocked out and that it makes it so much easier. Who makes that? Uh, Trello. I think the company's name is Trello. I don't honestly know. Um, so any other apps? Um, there's Trello. There's the um, my game app that I've been playing for I don't for months now mm-hmm. is Castleville. I am like addicted to this. And what's great about Castleville, or what I like about it, is that um, each holiday or each season, it comes out with new quests that you can go on to get different things, um, like. Like during the Christmas season, Santa crash landed in Castleville, and all the destroys and or all the toys and goodies got destroyed. So now there's quests that you have to go on to help him fill back his toy sack and his and cookies and goodie sack, and then um, so you help him get all of this ready. And through this, you get extra stuff that you usually would have to buy with cash. Um, through the in uh, game purchase system, you Santa Claus actually gives these things to you, so you don't have to purchase them. You just go through and you spend the time doing the quests. Um, uh, right now, I am going for a winter Yeti. I'm getting that Yeti. I'll tell you what, I'm almost there. Um, but yeah, their Castleville I think is my favorite app. And then um, Jesse, I hope I'm not stealing any of your thunder here, but. Um, my newly found best friend ever in the whole wide world is Clumsy Ninja. Who she, who she neglects and doesn't take care of. Oh, I do take care of him. Like, I, okay, I forgot to play with him today, but oh my god, when you tickle this little guy, it yeah. is hilarious. I, I like start laughing so hard I'm crying. Also, so, when you pick him by his foot and just slam him into the ground repeatedly. Uh, um, I don't do that to my ninja, but I do throw him on top of the tarps and on top of the building so that he can, like, I like um, to get just, some ninja skills. I like to just push him and knock him over. Today I was throwing watermelons at him and kept knocking him over. That was fun. And he, like, was laughing. Yeah. It was hysterical. So, um, uh, a couple other apps that I've downloaded, I'm doing some fitness things. We did Lose It this year. Yeah, we did. Lose It app. Um, Which is amazing. Um, The downside was I didn't stick to my diet plan and got, like, I'm just terrible about it. So It's just like keeping up with the lifestyle that you're trying to. And then Seven Minute Workout, I really like that one. It is high intensity cardio. So, I mean, it's jumping jacks and then you do planks and then you do, uh, 
push something ups, cardio, push-ups, and, yeah. and then you do, you know, sit on the wall, and, like, it's seven minutes, but I will tell you what, it kicks your butt every single time. Yeah. Like, I'm sore the next day, so I have to do, like, every other day, but anyway. So, um, and I think, you know, those are, those are the uh, Jesse? Most, my favorites. Well, the one that I play more than anything else is Extreme Road Trip 2. Oh, my God. Extreme <laughs> Road Trip 2. Really? Really. It, it is. I, I picked it up as a fluke. I accidentally clicked on an ad on another game, and it loaded this up, and I thought, eh, I'm lazy. I'm here. I'm going to go ahead and download it. And I absolutely love it. I've you get different cars. You just you press the left side of the app, of the uh, device to make it go backwards. You press the forward part of the app to make it go forward. So when you do jumps, you can do backflips. You can do forward flips. It throws little things at you every now and then. Like you have to collect so many coins. If you do, you get a percentage of your completion. And I I don't know why. I absolutely love it. Okay. Um, Another one, I've been looking forward to this one coming out for a long time. Back in 1983 for the Atari 800, oh there God. was a game called Mule. Okay. Mule is short for Multiple Use Labor Element. And they've recently redone it as an app, and it's, it's an almost exact port over. Now... I had to look up a definition of this game because it was a hard game for me to define, but this kind of summarizes it. It's a game. The game is an exercise in supply and demand economics involving the competition of, of four players. What it is, you have a whole bunch of different races you can choose from, and you're sent out to colonize this world. In so doing, you gather resources, you fight over plots of land, build up real estate, and then you want to have the most resources at the end to win, but if the colony doesn't have enough resources, it cannot survive. So you also have to dictate how many resources go to the colony, who all. I mean, it, it's it's a very it's a supply and demand game, which doesn't sound fun, but it is. Yeah. And I don't know why I enjoyed it so much back when I was like five years old, but it was the best game I ever played as a kid, and it's still high on the list. Okay. And the last one is a game called Warhammer Quest. This is okay. a port over of the old board game Warhammer Quest, which I recently thought, you know, I want to get this. I, I enjoyed it as a kid. I, I want to play it some more. Looked it up on eBay and it's like four hundred dollars. Yeah. Like, is this is it was it like Heroes Quest? It was. Except more involved. Okay. It's it's basically a role-playing game without the role-playing. Okay. You're thrown in a dungeon, and you try to survive. And then when you, you go to town, random events happen, things like that. There's, there's very minor role-playing elements, but it was basically just the role-playing game for board gamers. Okay. And that's basically what the app is, too. There's a lot of in-app purchases, which some people don't like, but I've purchased quite a few of them. And you don't have to to enjoy the base game. It's not an overly expensive app. It's like four ninety nine for the first adventure, and it's it's a long adventure. But yeah. Okay. Um, and is that it? Anything else? No, oh, that's it. Okay. Um, I, the 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 games that I keep going back to, no matter what I play, what else I play, I guess it's just the one is Jetpack. Um. And it's just a side scroller, see how far you can get with a jetpack kind of thing. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, I've run through all the, 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 the quests and I've run out several times and then they add more and then I do those and they run out again. It's, it's a lot of fun and it's really just kind of a mindless thing. Um, I also found this year, I found, uh, you don't know Jack. Um, it's an app. And I love, it's another trivia thing, so I love that. And it, it takes a very goofy, um, like PG-13, light R-rated take on everything, and there's a lot of jokes, and um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I really like it. And then uh, I just recently purchased and reviewed the Lords of Waterdeep app, um, and I really like that. 
Um, it's very much like the board game, and it's really good, and I've played it several times. I will be buying that as soon as we're done. It, it, oh, really? It, it's a board game. I, I love to play every time it comes out. I just have never broken into buying it because I know people who own it. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Okay. Um... And then, oh, and then, of course, the old, the old goodness, um, Space Team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was this year, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I, even if it wasn't this year, it was right at the end of last year. Yeah. And we, we should play it more often, and by more often, I mean all the time. I agree. <laughs> so, so um, I had a lot of fun with Space Team when we first played it. I want to play it more, and I've had a blast every time I've played it. It's, um, it's a, Group management game, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah. It, it, you all have tasks, and you don't always have the task to do, but you have to tell somebody, oh, somebody else do it as quickly as possible. So. It's a real good team-building exercise. <laughs> or cursing exercise. <laughs> um, let's move on into movies. Uh, Jesse, you can go ahead. No, Jesse, you just started, didn't you? I haven't started, I don't think. Nope, Jesse, you start. Okay, on I'll start. All right. Well, the best movie I've seen this year was uh, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Okay. I really enjoyed it. I like dark comedies, and it's a dark comedy. Dark. I, I enjoy romantic <laughs> comedies, and it's a romantic comedy. Oh. But I do. I like the pacing of it. I like the continual threat. It, it's humor when it needs to have humor. It's sadness when it needs to have sadness. This is okay. a top-notch movie. Okay. Uh, who's, who's in that? Um, Steve Carell and some woman. Uh, Kira Knightley. Who? Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I just did a review on that on the website. Also, I should have. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good one. Although, I think the director really feels society is better than it is when it's faced with imminent destruction. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, other than that, I'm not sure if it really counts. It's a TV series I've kind of discovered. That's fine. Uh, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. This is a series that I, I've watched enough. Which is ironic because one of the stars in that is in your most hated movie of the year. It is. But he is the only thing I liked in that movie. <laughs> well, one of the few things. But, yeah, I, I've watched it on Comedy Central a couple times. I've tried to and absolutely hated it. Could yeah. not grasp the, the aspect of it. Everybody's horrible. You don't like anybody. And that's the point. I started watching on Netflix from episode one, and that's the way you need to do it. If you've ever seen this and you had thought this isn't your style, just give it a chance from the start. Okay. Uh, Shirley, you want to you wanna go next so I don't steal any of the movies you want to do? Ooh, I seen one you just had on there that I like. Okay. So surely. <laughs> What's that one? It's a TV series. Go on. Um There were a ton of movies this year. Yeah, there were, uh, but that doesn't mean you liked them all. Uh not very many that I didn't like. <laughs> um uh The uh Hobbit, the uh Desolation of Smaug. Uh. Like that one, but like I'm a huge like fantasy person. I'm I love sci-fi, but if um I could, okay, maybe I'll take that back. Uh, I love sci-fi and fantasy. So um yeah, there was The Hobbit: Desolation of Smile. That's one of my favorites. Uh, we just watched Oblivion the other day. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, what do you think I, about it? I'm really disappointed we didn't see that in the theater. Yeah, yeah. I was very because impressed. I was surprised. The, and I don't like Tom um, Cruise. There you go. I was going to say Tom Hanks and that's the wrong guy. Yeah. I don't like Tom Cruise. Really? Um, something sent me over the edge with him, and he's just not been very good for me lately. But he was really good in that, and oh, that yeah. story was really good. Twisted And I great. liked it. Yeah, it really was. Very, yeah. Like, I the thing is, you kind of knew there was something going to happen with... Yeah, you picked up... There was a lot of weird going on. Yeah, yeah there, something's so, not quite right. Right. Um, but it definitely uh, turned out totally different than 
I thought at, at the beginning. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, like, there's been a ton of movies. Um, Saving Mr. Banks, mm -hmm. the um, story of uh, Disney acquiring Mary Poppins was amazing. Yeah. Like, um, the all the acting was just spot on and you were drawn in and the story was just so heartfelt and emotional. I mean, you were like literally on your seat with, on the edge of your seat with like this emotional anticipation. Yeah. Because it was such a good story. Yeah, I grew um, up with, with Mary Poppins. My mom loved that yeah. movie and I, we watched it all the time and this, this movie made me love it even more. Made me love it enough to want to go watch it almost immediately, and I just, I've seen it probably three dozen times yeah. already. Like, but what did we do? Again. We watched Saving the Serpents, and then we went the next day. We rented it. Was it the next on, day or the day after the yeah uh, that we were and then they had like a night of yeah. it. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Saving Mr. Banks, definitely, uh, I would definitely recommend anybody go see that. Yeah. Um, um, and then, do you want that one? No, go ahead. Um, Okay, let me just tell you how much I dislike Ben Stiller. Like, I oh. just can't get into his acting style. But we just saw um, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, like, yeah. what, two days ago? Uh, three days, four days ago. Three days it was ago. Tuesday, yeah. And, oh, my gosh, I could totally be in love with him. Yeah. I mean, it was an amazing movie. Is that it the one just... with the guy your daydreams? Yes. yes. Cool. Yeah, it's yes. been on my list of things to watch. Um, oh well, my it, gosh, it so just cute. came out Christmas Day. Yeah. Um, and just like everything nowadays, you can always see it the day before. Um, and I, it was very much like watching that movie. It was me in another life. Like, I used to daydream like that all the time. I still do to, to some point. But, like, Watching him go from this this normal everyday life and deciding to take those steps to become something more was just wonderful. And Ben Stiller was not goofy. Well, he's a little goofy in it, yeah, but it, it's, it's a calm, normal it goofy yeah. instead of like your wacky crap that he does sometimes. Oh, how how yeah. can you say that? Zoolander is not wacky. Oh, Zoolander is as wacky as it gets. They have a gasoline fight, Jesse. <laughs> like. It's just crazy. But it was a really, really good movie. I yeah. love that movie. And like, I'm trying to remember some of the movies that we saw at the beginning of the year. No, um, uh, we saw Into Darkness, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Um, love that movies. because it's Star Trek. G.I. Joe came out this year. Yeah. Um, that was my. That was the movie that was supposed to be associated with my. Draft the year before, yeah. Game. Last year, <laughs> um, my draft this year. Choice. Yeah, so yeah it was I, back in March. I like that one. That was a good one. I, yeah. I didn't care for the first one so much, but the, that was yeah. That the first one was kind of weird. The second one was better, less Tatum um, and more Rock. But yeah. I can't really argue with that. Um, and then um, after that, we saw in June. We saw did Fast and Furious Six come out. This yes, year? you just did. Okay, love that one, but I like. We saw World War Z. Um, World War Z. What was the other? Oh, Iron Man 3 came out. Yeah. That was okay. Yeah. It, it just, it seemed like, it seemed like the actors were like getting bored with what they yeah. were doing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of, okay. I really liked the way that they shown what the the effects of the Avengers was. Yeah. yeah. So it just acted yeah. like it never existed like most yeah. movies. Well, did. and then we saw the same thing in Thor and they're going to yeah. do that Captain yeah. America next and, and I'm okay with that. Um, they should just name them, you know, like Thor after New York. Yeah. Iron Man after New York. Also after New York. <laughs> also after Captain America. Oh, after New York. And then we uh, we oh. saw Cloud Atlas this year. <gasps> oh, I've seen it too. I was I was yeah. disappointed in that one. Why? Like what? really? I was. I, I don't know. Did you, did you read the book? No. Okay. okay. What? Disappointed you about it then? It was just I don't the know. It wasn't what I was expecting? I don't know. I just I need to watch it again. Maybe maybe you I wasn't paying full attention. Expecting crap. The thing is, I like I love that style of storytelling where they jump back and forth. So that, and that's what got. I don't like the flash forward. forwards and backs and. Uh, uh, well, then yeah, that might be the exact thing that was the problem. 
You need to stop watching movies expecting things. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> and of course, like all the um, the comic book movies. Yeah. Because yeah. didn't a Spider-Man movie come out this year too? Mm-hmm. The one with the new kid? No, that was last year. Last year, I think. Are you sure? Because I'm positive. I'm positive. Answer. I'm positive. Uh, Thor came out this year. Yeah, we saw we saw um, Iron Man or World War Z with the intern. So the Amazing Spider-Man came out last year. Yes, it did. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, anything else, really, from movies? Um, Leave the rest of those for me. So the internship was a good one. Oh yeah, oh, I that. Yeah. For as much as I, I was afraid that was going to be like dumb and over the top, it was still over the top, but it was really kind of heartfelt. Yeah, it was. But I love um, Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn together. Yeah. They are amazing. Yeah. The Wedding Crashers, so hilarious. So, so Jesse, any movies for you? Um, I already did my movies. Did yeah, you? Did yeah. You? Oh, that's right. <laughs> so I'll go next. Um, I really enjoyed End of Darkness. I know a lot of people have problems with it, but they're wrong. Oh, I enjoyed uh, it. I just wish they hadn't lied to us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. I can get past that. Um. I also really like Pacific Rim, and we just watched it again. again. It's just as yes. good as it was. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, we're like sitting here going, "What the heck is wrong with Jesse? Why doesn't he like this movie?" I mean, you got mo- giant monsters, you got giant robots. I know. And I'm not saying Jesse, I, like your point about, well, I wish I could have seen more of the war. I'm with you on that. I'm absolutely. You know that that would be really good as like, um, like not an anime series, but a cartoon taken with the same respect as an anime series. Yeah. Like, like put that down as like a show that you put on, you know, Friday evenings as a, as a cartoon, but still make it like impactful. And I would watch that every single week. Not a problem. Absolutely. And the one thing finally dawned on me, I keep saying about it. I wish there was, I, I just wish it, there was more to it. And I do, I just wish there was more to it. There wasn't enough. There just wasn't enough there. Um, and then um, I really I picked up a new web a new TV show called well it's not new new to me called The League I watched it on a fluke it is awesome it, it's about fantasy football which we do and then I started watching it and it is ridiculous it is absolutely ridiculous and then we were watching The West Wing which we watched a lot of this year and Ruxin from the league is in that and in the season we're in and he's an important character and he's serious. Oh, and really? it's just so weird because he doesn't, it's not the same at all. Um, and I just, I really like the show. It's, it's crude. It's ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. Um, so I'm really, I, I'm looking forward to the next season of that going on West on West Wing on Netflix. Yeah, I picked it up on Netflix as an absolute lark. Also, just the first, was, the very first episode sucked me right in. Well, in the first season, six episodes. So if yeah. you get through the first season and you didn't like it, no big deal. You're out three yeah. hours. And I, um, I don't like it, football. And I've never done a fantasy league. Well, yes, you have. Oh no, that's right. You skipped out. I on skipped it. out on that oh, one. Yeah, you slacker. Um, and then there are a couple. I, I, you know, honestly, I have to say. For, for movies and TV, I think the best bet for anybody right now is to pick up Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime, one of them, because there's a lot of TV stuff that you can yeah, see. Yeah, there is. Um, and I don't know about um, Amazon Prime or Hulu, but the stuff that's coming out of Netflix that's original, uh, Netflix Originals, is really good. House of Cards yeah. was ama- amazing. Kevin Spacey is fantastic in that, and Robin Wright is awesome. I thought you were talking about Trullo. No, no. <laughs> um, Netflix, uh, they also put out Orange is the New Black, and um, once you get pack, past the fact that um, somebody's naked in it, the series is really kooky and interesting and, like, makes you look at, at, at actresses that you've, that you've seen in a certain way in a totally different way. I was impressed by um, Catherine Janeway is played by... Whoever played Catherine, Captain Catherine Janeway in Star Trek Voyager is in this, and she is just totally different and does a really good job and is believable and impactful, and I really like her. Yeah, it's on um, my list of things to watch. Yeah, if you have, did you watch House of Cards yet? No, it's also on my list of things to watch. Like I said, I'm watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and American Horror Story right now are my two Netflix okay. things. And, did, oh, yeah. I'm watching American Horror Story. That's awesome. You should hit you should hit House of Cards next. Okay. I'm I'm serious. 
It's so good. I agree with you with Netflix, though. Netflix is my second most used app, and anybody who has high-speed internet should have Netflix. There's absolutely no reason not to. What's your highest used app? Extreme Road Trip 2. Seriously? Absolutely. I've played it every night. No, I'm joking. It is my most Uh used app. Um, And then uh, we'll get to the, the downside of the year. After we get through miscellaneous, so to, so wait for those because th- there are some things this year that I was not impressed by oh, and I'm yeah. so with. Um, so let's go into the miscellaneous, which is kind of our our catch all topic. I'm going to start this to kind of give the um, give a like a a, a feel for it. Um, Comicsology came out this year with uh, subscription and bundle services, which I think are awesome. Really, uh, I didn't know um, that. the subscription is basically you go okay, I want to read the boys, and it comes out monthly. Subscribe me to that. You'll deduct money from me. You'll warn me the night before. You'll deduct money from my account, and I will have the comic available for download the next day. I don't have to remember when it comes out. It will just be available for download when I want to read it. Hmm. Kind of like so, having a comic book store do a pull for you. Exactly. That is the best idea ever. And then their bundle subs- bundle option is, hey, uh, did you know that this that these six F issues should be important? Well. They're not part of a trade, but we're going to sell them to you as a bundle or at least 35 issues. And then you get them at a very reduced price, usually less than a dollar a piece. And you just get this big chunk of whatever. So if it's like, oh, well, I want this story. Well, it's across these seven episodes or these seven comic titles. Well, here it is. And you're done. And they're doing this, especially with older stuff. So like the Dark Phoenix saga, you should probably, you could probably pick up like that. That would be the kind of stuff they do it with. So it, it's all this stuff that you, you know, you'd want to pick up all together, but maybe it's too expensive to pick them up individually or they weren't available before. Now you can pick them up all at once, easy peasy, and you're done. Um, we went to Nerdtacular this year, Shirley and I did. Um, we did an episode from Nerdtacular even. Yeah. Um, Nerdtacular is uh, another podcasting network. Uh, the guy, they have a big fan base and a big community, and they get together out in Utah where the main guy's – from and just have a weekend of fun and it's all about the podcast it's all about interacting with the fans i met so many cool people out there i've never met a nicer bunch the people in utah were super nice we were in this gorgeous ski resort in the middle of the summer july 4th weekend 75 degrees outside the whole time so we're out in shorts and t-shirts and just enjoying the, the bright sun and the beautiful beautiful area and then we got to meet all these people um the people over at Alpha Geek Radio were super, super helpful about how more podcasting tips. Um, the, so it was Mark and Ali Spagnolo from the Word Whisperer, Mark Turpin from UK's largest YouTube channel, and uh, Steven Schleicher from Major Spoilers. They did a podcasting panel and just to how to what you can do with it, like suggestions, ideas, how to monetize. Gave all this great information. Uh, then they did their normal film sack, which was a live film sack, which they, they watch a movie and then they talk about the tropes and kind of make fun of the movie. They did um, Star Trek Three: Search for Spock. It was awesome. They did some trivia stuff. They did – it was just – everything about Frog Pants was there. And then you got to meet everybody involved in the community or a lot of the people involved in the community. It was just really, really nice to meet everybody and get to experience that. Um, Gen Con was great, but I'll let the other two – or my other two hosts talk about that. Um, and then I really want to talk about Studio Movie Grill and um, Alamo Draft House. They are a type of movie theater that I really appreciate. Uh, they offer premium seating, which to me, I know what that means, but that, that might be a little vague. That means very nice chairs with armrests that have enough room for not only your arm and your, um, what do you call that, neighbor's arm, but then a little bit more room. So you're not like rubbing elbows, just barely fitting into the seats. They sit comfortable. They're plush. The ones we were in were leather. Yeah. Um, and then they have a table because they serve full meals there. Um, the prices are not out of outrageous. They're a little, little bit more than your typical cheap steakhouse. So like an Applebee's or uh, a Charlie's. Oh yeah. Oh, Charlie's. Oh, Char- yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, so for we went there for dinner on 
Christmas Eve and spent 50 bucks, and that was with an appetizer and drinks. Their drinks are a tiny bit more expensive. They're like three bucks a piece, but it's unlimited refills, and you don't have to get up. They come and serve you, and they do it in such a way that they don't block the screen. Um, I'll, um, the Studio Movie Grill here in town, and it's a multi-state uh, franchise, so you could find one probably close to you, and if not, you could probably find uh, an Alamo Draft House close to you. Um, they, they they show older movies. We went and saw American President on the big screen, and that was great. Um, they did they do um, other movies like that too. Um, their movies through the week are only seven fifty. No matter what, they're just seven fifty. Um, they are they're always on Groupon, um, and they have a very strict. And this is what's important to me. They have a very very strict child policy and talking policy. If your child is too young, they may not let you in. Because they expect that the people are in that are in the theater are there to enjoy the movie and not have to listen to anything. Also, if you um, start talking and are loud enough for other people to hear you, you'll be asked to leave. Oh, nice. that they just don't put up with it. So it's that yeah. older feel of um, like a traditional movie house. And they won't let infants in. Yeah, they won't let the infants in at all. Yeah. Um, it's that older feel of a traditional movie house mixed with. Um, like this food and this atmosphere that's really, really conducive to a nice, relaxing night. Um, we we just, I, well, I, it's been over for like eight months. We got a studio movie grill here. Alamo Draft House does the same stuff. They do a lot more events, though, as in um, they do a Rocky Horror Picture thing. Oh, that'd be cool. They just, um, I want to say back in October, they did uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and they toured it with um, three of the five original kids. So Augustus Gloom and um, blueberry chick. the Blueberry Chick and the, <laughs> uh, the Hateful Rich Chick, they they were all there as the actors were. And they talked about the movie and what it was like filming and how it was and how cool it was and like talked about all of those things. So that was really cool. And that's the kind of like I, that's the kind of experience I want out of a movie theater. I want a movie theater that's going to celebrate my fandom of movies. Yeah. And that's what this place does. And then they serve really good food. Yeah. And for, for oh the, my gosh. For the, the food being a little more expensive, and by a little more, I mean you might pay a dollar more yeah. for entree. It's not that bad. Their food is delicious. And it's not just your, like, Applebee's kind of crap stuff. They do interesting things, and it's mm-hmm. it all tastes fresh. I've never had anything that I'm just like, well, they warmed this up. Never. Yeah, it's amazing. It's all made fresh. So, do you, surely you've been to the studio movie girl with, with me every yeah. time I've gone. Yeah. I mean, do you have anything else to add to that? Um. Oh, reserve seating. I'm sorry. I yeah. The reserve seating. So <laughs> you go online, you purchase your ticket, and then you pick out where you're sitting. Yeah. And that's where you sit. Oh, nice. When you get there, <laughs> when you get there to claim your seats, you go up, you say, "I have tickets." They hand you the tickets with your seat numbers on them. Yep. So you choose that ahead of time. So you know how packed the theater could be, and you know where you're sitting, and that's the end of the discussion. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, I think you basically hit on everything that's great about the the theater. And and all of our servers have been great. Oh, the service there is wonderful. And their point-of-sale service is on iPod Touches. Yep. So So as they're telling 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 them what you want, they're putting it in. And if it's not available or missing, picture. they know immediately. It's yeah. not a, well, I'm going to have to guess. Maybe oh, we're out I'm of gonna blue go cheese. Check with the kitchen yeah, no, none of that. Like that. <clears throat> so, um, Jesse, do you have any miscellaneous? Well, I would like to talk about Gen Con. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> this was the first year we actually did it as the website. And yeah. you forced me to do a interview. <laughs> Uh, not one, but like eight or twelve. Well, no, no. You you forced me to do one, and I, I I was nervous, and it went horrible. And then I did another one, and I was nervous, and it went bad. And then I did another <laughs> one, and it went well, and I loved it. I enjoy interviewing people. Apparently, I think I found a new hobby. You interviewed everybody at and, the time, <laughs> and then you can you can hear all fourteen interviews. Uh, I kind I think it was split evenly between us for what we could end up using. Um on our podcast feed back in August. So there should be 14 episodes. All the interviews are like 10 to 15 minutes at most. Yeah. Yeah. So I really feel bad that I did the big one first. I should have known better and I should have got some practices in. And next year I absolutely look forward to doing it again. Excellent. Good. Now we have an interview boy. Yep. (laughs) 
Um, anything else about Gen Con that you found especially exciting? Um, I spent a little bit of time in their uh, game library room. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I typically save a lot of money, and Gen Con is where I go to buy stuff, new things. Yeah. Well, this year I didn't have a lot of money, so I did things like I did the interviews, I did the games library thing. And I think I enjoyed it more, and it dawned on me, the games that I bought at Gen Con, I paid full price. I can just wait till I come home and order it online for quite a decent discount. Yeah. So, well, yeah. and some stuff you can only find at Gen Con and catch it on those discount nights. True. There yeah. are some things, yeah. But I Not this year, but the last year I bought Conquest of Nerath at like a 55% off or something ridiculous. Yeah. Because, because on Sunday they wanted to get rid of crap. And so. a game I've been looking for a long time was Agricola, and they had it there in a damaged box, so it was discounted on top of it for an out-of-print yeah. game. So, Yeah. Um, anything else, Miscellanea? Um, I got a 3D printer this year. I've talked about that during other things. It's the reason I haven't done a lot of reading. It, it's also <laughs> what I want to talk about in the, the bad stuff of the year. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, it, it's I've, I've acquired quite a few gray hairs over this beast, and it's still not working 100% properly, but that's what I get for buying the $700 model instead of the $1,700 model that actually works. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Um, surely. Any miscellaneous? Well, I mean, there probably is some stuff, and I probably should have wrote down some notes. Yeah. But I... Ah, uh, notes. I'm ill-prepared. Um, you got your iPad or your Kindle Fire this year. Oh, I got my Kindle Fire this year. Yes. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'm on that thing constantly. It is either my phone or my Kindle Fire. Um, I've watched, like... Uh, you watch all of Lost. I watched... Uh, and I smashed that. Yeah. Like, I watched all of Lost within... Like, every season of Lost within two months. That's yeah. the way to do it. Yeah, it was crazy, and... I know why it's a cult classic. It's it, I just I didn't want it to end. And the thing is, when it was ending originally on TV, Matt and I watched the original like ending. Yeah, we watched TV. the last episode, and I yeah. was like, "What the balls like, what? is going on?" Well, that's then, an, that was another one, sort of like the end of darkness, where the director just blatantly lied to everybody wow. through the whole yeah. series. Yeah. But <laughs> well, and. Well, so I, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I got my iPad Mini this year as well. Yeah. I love my iPad Mini. Oh. However, listening to watching movies on my iPad is fine, but listening to or watching movies on the Kindle is amazing for yes. the sound quality. The sound comes through on both sides on the Kindle. Yep. And uh, it it, I mean, it feels got, very like, stereo. Speakers. On yeah, that it thing. feels very stereo. The iPad does just have the tiny one tiny little speaker, and it does fine. I mean, it's yeah. okay, but audio-wise, the Kindle sounds sounds better, and they look yeah. about the same, honestly. Uh, but they, the, I, I really do like the Kindle wa- listening, uh, hearing on yeah. that one better. I think like um, it doesn't have very good YouTube app on it. No, um, so it doesn't have like. There's some Good weird social media or There's stuff some like weird that. quirks with the Kindle because right. it's a modified Android operating system. Right. They've updated with this newest one that just came out and they've up, they they fixed some of that, but like yeah. there's no flash on it and oh, there's no, no flash on so, any tablet so is there? Uh, uh if you get an if yeah. you get a true Android app, uh tablet there yeah. should be a flash oh, readable okay. device. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for reading and watching um, movies or watching media on it, it, it's amazing. If you want to do anything else with the Kindle Fire, the one that I have, yeah. uh, the model that I have, it's not, you know, it's not real. I don't play games on it very much. I think I have, like, three game apps on there. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be really cool because I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'll be able to play the games that I love on this bigger screen. But unless I get the an um, iPad Mini, I won't be able to do the things that I do on my phone. So, like my phone, we got the five. We got to upgrade this year to the five C's. Um, I love it. I love the sleek style. I like that I got to choose a different color other than just black or white. Um, what color did my, you get? I got the the. 
it looks like a spring green. Oh, I like it. Cool. Yeah, green. And, I, and I got blue. And he got blue. Um, so, um, but yeah, Kindle Fire, good for movies. Um, and then my iPhone is for everything else. Yeah. Um, what a miscellaneous. Um, Gen Con, I loved that we were doing interviews this, this year. We and by we, you mean me. <laughs> well, I meant like you and Jen. When I said we, I meant like the glory. Uh, like, the, the royal we. Yeah. The, yeah. The Shirley had like we. two questions for one interview and yeah. was with me and for everyone. I, fo- I followed Matt around and he's like, well, I'm nervous. You need to say, it. I'm like, you don't look nervous. Like all yeah. your interviews went off with, out of hitch. And I loved like following Matt around and being there during the interviews because I felt like I learned so much more mm-hmm. from the game publishers and creators, and um, I really liked, you know, that behind-the-scenes kind of look at the the games that we love to play. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, for me, Gen Con is just, it's just Gen Con. I love it. There's so much to do there and to see. I feel like Alice in Wonderland, like, you, you can't just hone in on one thing. Yeah. So, and all the wonder that's there, it takes literally all four days. And we, yeah. what, this year, because of the interviews, we almost didn't get through the hall. Yeah, we almost didn't get through the hall because we spent so much time yeah. on interviews. It's crazy. And, and we walked away with, uh, we, we met a lot of really cool developers and game yes. designers oh, yeah. that were willing to hand us um, product, product. To, to review. That was awesome. Um, we had great interactions with people. It was, it was really a lot of fun. Right. And I can't remember the creator, but my favorite game that we got that we're given for a review this year was Mad Cow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I loved that game. They oh also make gosh. Cow. And, and Cow, Cow and by Mad the way, is Cow. spelled Q-U-A-O. Yep. So that that should help. It's uh, Mad Cow is very much like the um, A-Holes and Presidents drinking game um, with some extra rules and no drinking suggested in the yeah. game. I'm sure you can drink while you play it. Um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So let's move on to the things this year that we did not enjoy. And I just want to hit a couple of things that, that really disappointed us. And Jesse, please don't say Pacific Rim. That's where I was pointing at. <laughs> uh, I'll start because um, there was a movie this year that really killed it for me and made me really regret going and seeing it. And that was um, Man of Steel. Oh, really? Yeah, See, when I haven't I seen that one yet. When I watched it and I came out of the theater, I was okay with it. And then people went, you know, this was wrong with it, and this was wrong with it, and this was wrong with it. And every time they pointed out something, I kept going, yeah, yeah you're right. right. And that was terrible, and I don't like that, and I hate that part, and this was not what we wanted. And now they're moving forward with Man of Steel 2, and I'm just so See, dreading what they're going to do. That makes me so mad about Man of Steel 2. I have never been a Superman fan. <laughs> I don't like the indestructible hero that can only be killed with a magic bullet. But I love Batman, and I don't want to have to watch Superman the to problem, see the new Batman. The problem with that is a good Superman story has absolutely zero to do with his powers. I've never seen a good except, Superman story. then. Except that his powers cannot solve everything. Yes, you have, actually, Jesse. You've read a good uh, Superman story. Which one? Um, Injustice. Oh, yeah, yeah, but he's... But, but doesn't matter. He guy. becomes this flawed, evil human because he wants to use yeah, his power to solve yeah. everything. Yeah, true. And, and, that's, and that's the key to Superman. The key to him is he can do that, but he doesn't because he's better than that. And it's about his morality. So, okay. yeah, you're right. That's it, it was just really disappointing, and it was really kind of dumb. And the actors were go- were good actors and put into a bad script. And I don't, I, I really didn't like it, and I really, really regret seeing it. And the theater we saw it in was kind of crap. Oh, that was out in Greenfield. Yeah. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, Jesse, you got anything? Yeah, I got a couple things. <laughs> Pacific Rim. Uh, no, I'm not going to harp on Pacific Rim. That's already been stated before. Um, the, and it wasn't overly disappointing. It just it wasn't what I was expecting. Um, the one thing that I was disappointed in was The Hobbit 2. Mm-hmm. And I we, we have had 
emails stating that I, I did remember some things wrong from 16 years ago. Uh, and we appreciate uh, our, we do uh, definitely because yeah, and it does make sense. And I, I do know we appreciate our our friend uh, Marion Harmon for uh, taking the time to write in and tell Jesse he's wrong. Absolutely, we tell he's, we tell Jesse he's wrong all the time, but yeah. it's, it's helpful to have somebody outside of our immediate circle do that. I, and and uh, Marion actually has some good points that we're going to address when we do our immediate next immediate movie review and discuss that. But okay, good because I do yeah. want to discuss it. And yeah, 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 it is. He does have a lot of good points, and some of the things. Peter Jackson changes is for the better. Most of the changes in the first movie, I like. Yeah, like like bunny rabbits pulling a sled. Yes. Just saying, awesome. But the whole half hour of The Hobbit 2 is wasted in the last ten seconds of the movie. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's like it just wasted a lot of time there. But that and uh, as I mentioned before, my 3D printer, it's been giving me a lot of trouble. It's still giving me a lot of trouble. I'm giving it an evil eye right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it has proven to me that when I do save up the funds, I will buy a better one. And I might oh, sell this one for some money towards Scrap. that one. Scrap. <laughs> just to teach it a lesson. Um, but no, my, my biggest problem with it is, is that it was... It's not top of the line. It is for a hobbyist, and I'm going to school full time. I'm working full time. I just don't have the yeah. time to devote to this. I wanted a tool, not a hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shirley, anything? Um, I would have to say, like, you know, I'm not into the whole. Like, I haven't been a gamer as long as you guys have been um. gamers, and. I think my disappointment comes from I we didn't I I felt like I didn't get to do enough. Like we went to Hoosier Con, we went to Gen Con, we went to Nortacular, but there is so much more in there. You know, there's a ton of stuff out there yet for me to experience. Like I haven't found um, any like video games. I'm not a big video gamer like there's nothing that I play on any other platforms and I you know we have an Xbox 360 we found that copy of Shadow Run that yeah. didn't work and I was so disappointed in that because I work. loved um, tabletop Shadow Run yeah. like I love that and if that would have worked that would have been amazing I think I may have been able to get into that video game there's a couple of video games out there that you know, we're at GameStop, and I see, and I'm like, oh, I should get that. And there's a new one coming out with a heroine that is kind of anime-ish. Yeah, And I don't she's know. got a big sword. Yeah. So I want, you know, I'd like to try that. And Bayonet. Bayonet. Oh, yeah. The one where uh, she uses her hair as clothing. Bayonetta. Yeah. Where is that? I don't on know. The end? I honestly don't know. A sword know, so on the end I... of a rifle is called. Uh, Bayonet. Bayonet. Bayonet, Bayonetta. Okay. Um, like I would like to, you know, get into that. So I think um, my disappointment doesn't come from any singular experience throughout the year. It comes from the lack of experiences. So I want this. like I would go out to San Diego to Comic Con. Yeah. Love to get out there, or even Chicago. Yeah. So on the record, you're saying you had no bad experiences. So so you enjoyed Dillinger's Dead. Oh Jesus Christ! I forgot about you that. Know what? that. Let's was put so that on there. I forgot about it, but thank you, Jesse. Yeah, so Dillinger's Dead was terrible. Okay. So. Oh my God. I thought. So that yeah, the, there's yeah. that. Oh my. Oh. Thanks, Thanks Jess. Well, you um, that nightmare. Let's let's wrap up with talking about what's coming up from Nerd, Nerd's Domain this year. Um, we are continuing our um, schedule of posting daily. Um, nothing's going to change there. Uh, we have the two podcasts we're currently doing. You're listening to one. The other one's Masks on Our Tip. We've got some regular game coming up for that. Um, we're still in Chapter 1 as of this recording. or I'm sorry, Chapter 2 as of this recording in London. I don't know how quickly that's going to go. Um, my players have continued to... What? Or be resolved. Or be resolved. My, <laughs> my players... Um, Continue to surprise me, and I'm enjoying every bit of that. We have um, at least four side quests that we're going to record this year for for the Call of Cthulhu. I don't know how many of those you guys will get to listen to, 
they're kind of going to sit on the back burner until we need them. Um, what were you going to say, Jesse? We have three podcasts, don't we? Yeah, that's, you, you just said we had two. We, we currently have two. You're forgetting the Criterion Collection. No, no, no. That's part of the Nerds Domain podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I get what you're saying. But yeah, so there's the Nerds Domain podcast, which includes our immediate movie reviews, Criterion Collection, What You're Doing, um, and then our all of our miscellania where we interview authors and publishers and game designers coming up this year. Sorry. Our friends over at Accidental Cyclops have uh, designed a game that's going into publication, and we're, we're really excited about hearing about that. And we'll have them on, I think, sometime in February or March. And then um, we have our Kickstarters pod, uh, interviews here as well under the Nerds Domain podcast. Um, that might spin off into its own podcast this year. It may not. We'll see. Um, but we have um, at least one lined up for sometime, I want to say, mid to late January. And then we've got a couple more that we're going to start looking at. I kind of took off December because with all the holiday stuff, it was just too much. But we're going to ramp that right back up with Kickstarters. Um, awesome. What? Awesome. And then we have our Masks of Neural Tip. That's going strong. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a uh, podcast mm-hmm. network now, so we're going to watch that um, evolve and grow as it goes. We have at least one more podcast coming from directly from Nerds Domain. Um, it should, I want to say April or May, we should have our one-shot podcast going. Uh, John Quiet, who's not here tonight to talk about it, so I'm going to do it for him. Um, he, he's going to sit down with uh, a group of players, and he, either he or another person will run a game, just a one-shot of a system, explain the system, walk, it, walk everybody through it, and play, and see how it plays differently each time. And we'll play different systems with different genres, with different ideas, with different fields, with different rules, and kind of experience um, the different ways you can experience games so that you can see, well, you know, I really like a heavy storytelling. These or are the games hear. I can play. Well, yeah, yes, yeah, so you can hear. Um, <laughs> um, that should be coming, I want to say, April, May, maybe June. It depends on how quickly it takes us to get a couple under our belt so that we know for sure we're never going to be in a bad spot with that one. Um, we also have our friend Scott Troyano, who should be starting up a podcast. He's on our Masks of Neural Tip uh, podcast, and I think mm-hmm. that one will be interesting. That one will be all about the art of storytelling. Um, we'll see how where that goes. I don't know how quickly that one's going to start up, but he seems to think pretty quick, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, anything else? I believe we've got one, two, three, four, five guaranteed cons, maybe six. So we've got Hoosier Con, which is an Indiana Con. Um, then we have Indianapolis yeah. Comic Con, Pop Con here in Indianapolis. You'll notice there's a there's a theme there. Um, and then maybe we may hit um, In Conjunction, which is also here okay. in Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, Gen Con clearly here in Indianapolis, and then okay. Starbase Indy, which is in Indianapolis. Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, we may. Well, that's our plan for sure. Um, there may be some other conventions we go to. We don't know. Um, and then there was one last thing I wanted to say that I was just thinking about, and I should have written it down when I thought it, and I didn't. But we've got a big year coming up. Um, we're really glad we have you as a listener. Um, keeps coming back, and we'll keep producing content. Um, our, our January immediate movie will, review will be I, Frankenstein. Um, oh, I'm excited about we've that got, one. Yeah. Oh, I'm on the fence, but yeah. <laughs> we've got... Uh, it's Aaron Eccleston. Oh, yeah, that's... It doesn't matter. Oh, we've got um, <laughs> we've got Day of Wrath coming up, and then Pygmalion for our Criterion Collection. Um, yep. We've got some What You Doing. We've got Accidental Cyclops. Which, uh, there was something else I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, I know. I've got it. Okay, we will we will be running a game at Gen Con. Oh, all of yeah. the Hulu game oh, that yeah. should hold up to thirty two players all yep. at once. So if you're gonna make it out to Gen Con. Try, try and get into the game. Um, we have to register that sometime soon with Gen Con and get that set up, but we are definitely going to run that. It should be interesting. And um, also, as of the what ninth is that what we said? Ninth of January, mm-hmm. we have a weekly game night here in town, here in Indianapolis, for, at the Game Paradise store down in Fountain yeah. Square, um, where I will be hosting the game night and I will be teaching people how to play the games that we have available. And uh, we want to thank uh, Game Paradise. They've been fantastic um, working stuff out with us. It's a great store to go to. They have a, 
a huge oh, library of games that you can come play. Games. Uh, yeah, 1,300 and some odd games. It's just ridiculous how many games they have available. So come down to Game Paradise if you're an indie or if you're nearby, and you should check them out. I think that'll Jess, do us tonight. You got anything? Yeah, Jesse. Sounds good to me. Jesse will right. be printing um, all kinds of stuff for us. Oh, three with days. any luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, again, giving it dirty luck. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll do us tonight for Nerds Domain Presents, our year in review. Yay! Um, Hard to believe can, it's been a year. I know. I know. Right? This year went, like, fast. Um, we sh- you can find us all over on iTunes. You can give us a review over there. You can go over to our website at nerdsdom.com and read our reviews. Click our Amazon link and order stuff through it. Same price for you. A little bit comes back to us. And you can find our t-shirts over at slashloot.com. Um, you can at tinyurl.com slash in D shirts. And oh, we, oh, I got one. What? Where can they keep going to find the Omega Nerds Network? And you can go to omeganerds.com to find our Omega Nerds Network or go to our website and click on the Omega Nerds tab. And we will talk to you guys real soon. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>